So, Rachel, I went to see Palomar Medical Center, which bills itself as the hospital of the future. Except when I got there, it was weird because it didn't even feel like a hospital. And that's partly because they've rethought the entire building. They built it from the ground up. And it incorporates all of the latest thinking and technologies that are trying to address a lot of the growing inefficiencies in healthcare. Well, that's great for Palomar that they've been able to start from the ground up. But what about the established hospitals out there that aren't starting from scratch? What can they take and what can they learn from Palomar? Well, Palomar thinks of itself also as sort of a laboratory for healthcare technology. So many of the innovations that they are pioneering right now might well be rolled out to older established hospitals in the future. We're headed to this new hospital. It's brand new. And they basically started with a whole clean sheet on how to design a hospital and the kind of equipment that they have within it. And the hope is to create something more efficient, better for patients, and able to handle a lot of the stress that the healthcare system is going to encounter in the future. How do you build today that allows you to grow into that future? Whatever we were going to build needed to be very patient-centric, needed to be very flexible. So the challenge for us is how do we take two steps for every 10 that we take today? And can technology help us get there? I would imagine that in a lot of hospitals, lots of institutions in general, there's a resistance at times to innovation. This is a living lab in its own way. If you have an idea and you want to test it out, yeah. we're willing to take a look at that and we're willing to help make you better in that process. Hi, I'm Sam. Hi, Sam. Welcome to San Diego. I have spent some time in hospitals. Fortunately, not a lot. But I can tell you, they don't usually look like this. That's right. Yeah. That's our objective. <laughs> You've definitely succeeded. It seems a little bit more maybe like a hotel. Definitely not medical. And you're going to get that feel as you explore this building. This is a result of a health care bond that was passed in California, the largest health care bond in California history. Price tag. How, how much did this whole operation cost? This hospital is about a billion dollars. The billion dollar hospital. That's right. Excellent. So the first thing you do when you come into a hospital is get registered. Right, which usually means a clipboard. A clipboard. And, uh, about 38 pages. That's of right. Paper. Well, we don't do that here. Please come a little closer to the camera. Please come a little closer to the camera. Please, please, please. We've finished taking pictures of your eyes. That was it. That was it. Can I move my head now? Yes, you can. Okay, great. Thank and you're you. You're done. You're now registered. Important. Importantly, as you go through the hospital, when tests mm -hmm. are ordered for you, right. we can accurately identify all that information now and associate it with you to make sure that all of the records are stored in one place. You guys have been not only rethinking registration, but all aspects of sort of the hospital experience with things like monitoring vital signs. Vital signs, when I think of the times that I've been in the hospital, have been exceedingly annoying. Right. We've got Jim Moon from Soterra Wireless with us today. Hi, Jim. Hi. This is the old way of doing spot check monitoring. And we're the first hospital in the world to implement this next generation physiological monitoring platform. The device itself is a small wrist-worn device that goes on the patient's arm. Can I and grab a hold? Certainly can. It's pretty light. It's light. very lightweight. All of the vital sign data flows wirelessly from the patient to our system and from there into the electronic medical record. That frees the nurses up to do what nurses should be doing, which is caring for patients rather than keeping records. Okay, so I'm here with Melissa. <laughs> Hi, Melissa. Hi. It's such a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> and what can you tell me are you doing here? I'm hooking up the electrodes to you so we can start getting your heart rate, your skin temperature. This is your Rolex. Is it this way? Okay, I never know. You are at 106 heart rate right now. If I wanted to, I could touch that heart rate there and actually see your rhythm. I've got rhythm. <laughs> Your oxygen is 96 right now. So all of this is being displayed on this device. It's also going somewhere else, right? We invented our own application. 99 cents? Uh, well, hopefully a little more than that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> physicians can now have this device at home. Okay. So if they get a call here from the floor, they can see all of the waveform information coming from the monitor. So that means they can be providing sort of care and assistance on the go. Exactly. Whether they're in the building or not, that's more efficient, that's going to lower costs for you. Right, it's all about anytime, anywhere access. Great. And Airstrip is a Sequoia-funded oh, yeah. startup that's right. taking this technology to market. Oh, yeah, Sequoia. Well, they... They'll be selling that to other hospitals. Very, very cool. So, Orlando, 
Where are you? I'm using this Beagle robot. We have several of these around the hospital. So the big benefit here is obviously that not only can you have sort of, you know, virtual presence, but you're able to move around. Can we can we take a little walk? Yeah, let's do that. I'm assuming doctors, nurses, other medical practitioners are able to go visit patients. Is that how this works? Yeah, we encourage family members that are not in San Diego, family members really from around the world, take control of these robots and visit with patients. We found that they just love it. You are currently sitting at what, a laptop? Yeah, so I'm just sitting at a laptop and right. uh, using the piece of software that we make available, and that's it. It's very, very easy to use. It's a great tool. And it's a lot cheaper than airfare. Exactly. <laughs> I see that we're in a, what appears to be a pretty standard issue hospital room. I couldn't help but notice whatever this is. Do not touch or lean on. Well, I've already now done that. I'm sorry. This is a robotic room disinfection machine. That's the scariest thing I've heard in weeks. This machine uses very high intensity xenon light. If we were to turn this machine on while we're in here, you'd get a really bad sunburn. Okay. But what this light does is it attacks the DNA of the pathogens and prevents that uh, the pathogens from replicating. In five to ten minutes, this device is going to sterilize all of the surfaces in this room. Howard Hughes would have loved one of these. So is this machine new to hospitals? There are very few. We yeah. were the first on the West Coast. This is a added safety measure it, to go way beyond what other hospitals are doing. Have you noticed since using the ZX any change in terms of people getting infected? Our own internal research shows a dramatic decrease. This thing really is a super bug killer mm -hmm. and really does work as advertised. We don't know what the next 10 years will produce, but based on the infrastructure, what we've created here allows us to respond to any of those needs 10 and 15 years from now. So wherever you go in this building, you have a sense of what the future could be, not just what today is.